In this video, we'll talk about the other type of improper integral, and that is the one where the function itself goes to infinity. So how do we handle the case where my function itself goes to infinity? Something where my graph, say it looks like this, I have an asymptote here, and I want to find integral from 1 to 5 of f of x. How do I go about doing that? The idea here is more or less the same as the idea of infinite intervals. I want to take the problematic point, replace it by an r, and limit r to the point that I care about. For these ones, there's one extra step, and that's finding the problematic point in the first place, because you might not think at the outset that the integral is improper. However, you have to make sure there's no issues inside or at the end point before you do any of this. So step one is always figure out where the problematic point is. Once you know which endpoint's problematic, or how to handle it, then you replace that by an r, do the integral, and then limit r to the endpoint. So put an r in there instead, evaluate the integral, and then limit r to the problematic point from the correct side to get the answer. Now what do I mean by problematic point? I basically mean an asymptote of the function or a place where the function is not defined. That's really how we're going to know where we have a problematic point. A denominator being zero or something like that will tell us this is an issue. I should approach this problem carefully and look at it like it's an improper integral to make sure I don't mess something up in the process. Let's see an example of what this might look like. So here are two integrals that we want to solve. Calculate the integral from 1 to 5 of 1 over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds, and integral from 1 to 5 of 1 over x minus 1 to the 8 thirds dx. So these might look like innocent integrals at this point. However, they are both improper integrals. Why? Because there's an asymptote at 1. And why do we know that? We know that because the denominator is 0 at 1. Which means in both cases, I have to handle this like it's an improper integral because I have an asymptote at one of my endpoints. You have to do the same if the asymptote's in the middle. We'll deal with that in a future video. So what I should do is replace the 1s by r's, do the integral, and then limit to 1 to see what I get. So for the first case, we have integral from r up to 5. I'm replacing the 1 by an r. 1 over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds dx. This evaluates to 3x minus 1 to the 1 third from r up to 5. And then I plug in my endpoints. 3 times 4 to the 1 third minus 3 times r minus 1 to the 1 third. And I can see what happens as I limit r to 1 from the right. So the integral from 1 to 5 of 1 over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds dx is defined to be the limit as r approaches 1 from the right, because I'm coming from the right side of 1 here. Integral of r to 5 of 1 over x minus 1 to the 2 thirds, which I know I did this already, is the limit as r goes to 1 from the right, 3 times 4 to the 1 third minus 3 times r minus 1 to the 1 third. And what happens if I send r to 1 here? Well, I can just plug in 1, because this function's continuous at this point. I can plug in 1, and when I do, this goes to 0. That's going to be my limit exists, because I can do that limit. This equals 3 times 4 to the 1 third. So the integral converges, and it converges to this limit. Now let's check out the second one and see what that gives us. So the second one was integral 1 to 5, 1 over x minus 1 to the 8 thirds dx. And this process is going to be the same. Replace the 1 by an r and take a limit. Integral r to 5, 1 over x minus 1 to the 8 thirds. I can integrate this. I get a 3 fifths, 1 over x minus 1 to the 5 thirds, plugging in r and 5. So I get a 3 fifths times 1 over 4 to the 5 thirds minus 1 over r minus 1 to the 5 thirds. But now what happens here is I send r to 1. I see I have a problem with this one. So integral 1 to 5, 1 over x minus 1 to the 8 thirds dx equals the limit as r goes to 1 from the right of this expression again, 3 fifths. 1 over 4 to the 5 thirds minus 1 over r minus 1 to the 5 thirds. And now what happens when I go to plug in r? When I go to plug in r, this term here goes to 0, which means now I have a 1 over 0, and that's undefined. 
that goes to infinity, which means this limit does not exist. So we would then say that the integral from 1 to 5 of 1 over x minus 1 to the 8 thirds dx diverges. And I don't get a number that it converges to because it doesn't converge to a number. So because this limit does not exist, because I had an r minus 1 in the denominator that was going to 0, therefore this integral diverges. So different powers have different results based on whether they converge or diverge. And so that's the idea of handling these improper integrals with unbounded integrands. The idea is you figure out where the asymptote is and then get rid of that point from your integral by replacing it by an r, do the integral normally, and then limit r to that endpoint and see what happens. Sometimes it will converge because that term will go away. Sometimes it'll diverge when that term sticks around in a way that blows up and goes to infinity. And in that case, your integral as a whole diverges. So you can get both convergent and divergent integrals of this type, just like you can of the other type as well. So that's the sort of approach you want to take when handling these sort of problems with unbounded integrands for improper integrals.